Pat, then Don. Don. Oh. Sorry, Don. <laughs> um, oh, were these findings disputed? Are they controversial? In the session itself, no. I, I would certainly there were no dissenting voices whatsoever. Basically, they're just looking at the data. If there's uncertainty, it would be on the projections into the future. Are these storms really going to occur with greater frequency? But I think that the consensus of the global climate change models for this region are predicting that. Um, uh, the, the correlation between uh, uh, levee breaks or islands flooded and uh, the, the data uh, with the time of year and the type of storms, um, it, <clears throat> is that disputed? No, with the timing of the storms, we know exactly when they occurred. So I, I guess, yeah, yeah, I asked it wrong, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that, that would just be a matter of looking at the record. <clears throat> but in terms of um, likelihood of future levy breaks, is this a key variable, and is that widely viewed as um, the major external threat to levies? No, actually, that's a very good question. I think the findings of this say that, that I think most people would have expected that these levee failure events would be snowmelt dominated. What this is saying is that's not the case. It's these, whatever you call them, pineapple expresses, these atmospheric river type events. So those are the, in terms of disaster preparedness, those are the types of events that we certainly need to take a lot of care about. So this new forecasting system that's being put in place, you will allow perhaps greater warning uh, of the risk you, when we should be particularly vigilant. Is there any other uh, uh, place to look for dissenting opinion or to resolution of any controversy? The reason I ask it is that um, some, some of the testimony here by engineers who work on levees in the Delta um, and others um, uh, make, uh, makes an argument that the, the levees are growing stronger every day and that um, the, um, the, 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 the threats are, uh, are, are manageable and perhaps have taken this into account and perhaps not, but you had a big conference and lots of diverse people, I'm sure. Um, I guess my question is, at some later date, will, will we hear conclusions that don't incorporate this scientific information and have they been vetted sufficiently that we could rely on this set of uh, conclusions. So, so actually the information that was presented at the conference was looking more at the types of events when it occurs rather than the cause of the actual levy failure because there's a whole suite of possible factors that go into this. This was focused more on you know, what are the events that, that cause it. And it was interesting when I was talking with Chris Knopf and we were reflecting on the conference yesterday, that was one of Chris's comments was that it seemed that just the engineering community and the actual risk of levies themselves was very underrepresented in the conference. And it's probably something that you, you, we, we may encourage more actively next, you, in the next event. And of course, there was the other conference about three or four weeks before that that was looking specifically at levy stability. Don, then uh, Randy. Yeah. Uh, some my questions are kind of along the lines that, that Pat was asking, but I think just to your last point, uh, again, you can only extend the invitation. You can't require folks to come, but I think maybe a meeting of the minds to have engineers and scientists, um, uh, and there may be some obviously cross-disciplinary you know, overlap. I, I think that would be 
good because it, I think some of the questions that, that Pat has posed it certainly occur to me because uh, as you talk about saturation and different types of events that you know are the uh, levee failures that are that are denoted here are they due to overtopping are they due to you know failures uh, related to seepage or they uh, other types of, of issues because I mean, one of the things that has been expressed not only in, in, in this forum but lots of other forums that improvements are being made that will help strengthen, raise, um, and make other modifications to levies that will hopefully guard against, you know, events that we know about, but also ones that might be anticipated. I guess my, my question, um, uh, Peter, is is that um, in this examination about the Pineapple Express, I mean, part of that is not just the amount of rain that you get, is that if you've got snowpack at lower elevations and then you get the warm rains, and so you get the combination not only of the, as I understand it, of sort of the, the rainfall, but then the melt that occurs simultaneously or as a part of that. And that's, are they looking at that, the predictability of that, that you get a storm like the ones we had the last few days that, you know, gets, gets snow, even though it may not stick at some of the you know, elevations that, you know, below 5,000 feet in some cases. <clears throat> you can layer that in, and then you get the warm storms come in when you might otherwise predict that you were going to have the colder storms that would continue to, to layer the, the snow and then get the, you know, the more um, predictable uh, melt in the springtime. So I guess I'm, it wasn't clear to me that with these storms, yeah, it's, it's the amount, obviously, that has the impact, but it's what's already there and gets added to at any given uh, you know, storm event, I guess, or, or series of storm events. Uh, absolutely. You're correct there. Yeah, the warm rain on snow events yeah, very, very, yeah. very, very significant. But really, in, the, in this paper, they haven't got down more to those details. This is the big picture process. Okay. But in answer to your question, there is a lot of attention being focused on that right now. The research group at UC Merced with Roger Bales, you, they look at the sort of snow dynamics, effect of rain on snow. And the scientists they have working there are some of the best you, you there are. In fact, I'm sure... Uh, Mr. Knopp, you, with the Forest Service, is, is very aware of that research too. But, so this was mainly trying to look at the, what sort of mechanism should we be you, aware of, particularly if we can't rely so much on the past to predict the future. You, what might we expect in it? Well, and I guess what kind of keyed my question too was, you know, you, you talked about the West Coast phenomena versus the Gulf Coast, and you know, we're in, in the, the comparison, not you, but the comparison was to the Mississippi and the volumes of water and so forth, and that's, I guess that's all relative. But again, recognizing, you know, maybe a, a changing pattern of some sort, but that, that still is a factor. I mean, it's a factor, obviously, how you manage the system, but I, I, I think it ties in from the tips of the Sierras uh, right down to the, to, you know, to the, you know, to the bay, I guess, and, and how you look at this. and. Predict, you know, predicting that's going to be obviously work of, uh, of, of lots of folks. But I just want to be sure because I think that <clears throat> that's one of the things that gets argued too and kind of back to past questions. It's going to be, you know, how, how we apply, and we're going to hear it later today as we talk about levies and how things are, you know, are, are called out to relative to standards and so forth is that if we're looking at <clears throat> our situation in the West Coast and as it relates to the Delta and so forth, then try to get those things so that we have a better understanding, but, but, you know, maybe we operate things a little differently here than you might elsewhere, in, somewhere else in the United States uh, because of some of those factors, and I think the same is, it would be applicable to levies, that, you know, you, you may have to anticipate certain things, but it may not be this, this universal application of, well, it's, it needs to be this way because somebody dictates it on high, but we we're going to do it this way because we think this is the best fit for Delta, for managing our water system, for... Uh, you know, safety as well as obviously all the other aspects of, of, of water and what it means, both threat, you know, the threat it pre presents to, to levees in, in, in certain times, but also what it means to the, the health of the system and all the people and uh, natural uses for the water. So, anyway, I, I, it's fascinating. Can we get a copy of the, of the, the slide, the, the summary, or is it in, is it in this? Uh, no, we just got permission to use this yesterday. So, oh, okay. But right. certainly it, yeah, it, 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 it will be good just to, to look at it. So, thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. Peter, I think I uh, heard you mention that there was another conference before this one mm -hmm. on, on levees. Um, did we have anybody there? And are there any findings that you can report? Um, actually, from 
that conference, I was not actually in the state at the time. Eric, did, did, did you attend or did any of the... Uh, I attended the Levy Vegetation yeah. Conference. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so, so Eric was there. Is there anything you can tell us? Anything that's new? Mr. Nickel, come to the front and grab a microphone, please. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I think there was a few different levy conferences in the last several months. Um, I attended one about two months ago that was looking specifically at vegetation issues on levees. Um, as you folks know, that's probably an issue that's kind of been raised recently with respect to the Corps of Engineers and their concern about whether levees should uh, be devegetated, and it's a big, big issue in the Sacramento and Central Valley. But um, they did not talk about uh, atmospheric rivers or science of that nature. They were really very focused just on the vegetation issue. There have also been several conferences about the recent Corps of Engineers declaration, or at least meetings, uh, about excluding some territory, uh, not meeting their standards <clears throat> in the Delta. But uh, uh, we have a whole item on that as item number nine on our agenda today. Yeah, that was not covered at the conference, but that is something we're speaking about uh, at 1 o'clock today. Was there any agreement on whether vegetation on the levees is a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, no, there was no agreement. Um, basically, there was, it was quite a well-attended conference for three days where a lot of good science and engineering was presented trying to show, uh, I think, I guess maybe to back up, I think what was highlighted was a lot of the risks to the levee structure was perhaps not necessarily completely attributable to vegetation. So there was a lot of work that was shown, of recent work that was done looking at rodent and burrowing animal issues within, within levees. They were actually able to excavate some levees, do some forensics, and show the extent of burrowing animal damage. And so they were also, of course, looking into the extent of damage and uh, things of that nature attributable directly to trees and vegetation as well. So they presented the state of the science as it was understood to this point, but there was no specific conclusions or decisions coming out of it. Um, I would say the Corps of Engineers had folks there that were directly um, participating in their research, but the decision makers were notably absent. It leads to an obvious question. Is there any relationship between burrowing rodents and vegetation? Uh, I would say that I did attend one talk where they did note that certainly if you have orchards right next to the levee, you do seem to have very interested burrowing animals living close by. Thank you. Okay. All right, Dr. Goodwin, second uh, discussion. Okay. I'm not sure why we're on the subject of conferences um, and brown bags. I'd just like to let folks know that we, we did have a Dr. Arthur Minette from uh, IHE Delft. He was the former chief of research and development for uh, Delft Hydraulics and then Deltares here uh, earlier in the week, and he gave a seminar on the, the Dutch Delta, uh, which was very interesting, and for many of us, we learned what the real difference between Holland and the Netherlands is. Um, but part of his visit was also to explore this exchange of students uh, and young folks. Uh, now he's back in academia. So th th that was a very interesting seminar. And then this Tuesday, for anyone who's interested, at noon in uh, your, our building on the second floor, uh, John Nessler, who is retired from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, will be giving a sem seminar on the river machine, conceptual models for rivers. So I'll be talking about conceptual models in a little more detail in a moment. I'll go over these next few items fairly quickly, if we can go to the uh, PowerPoint again. So with the uh, State Water Resources Control Board hearings, we just wanted to let you know that the uh, third in the series of three workshops being hosted by the State Water Resources Control Board will be on November the 13th and 14th. Uh, and why this is important and relevant to you as the council, it, these workshops are in support of ERP1 uh, in the Delta Plan. 
as we've got several other items to talk about, what we thought would be best is we'd just give you a notice that this was going on. The third workshop is actually looking at models, models for the future, the models that uh, the State Water Resource Control Board should be relying on both now and into the future, primarily for water operations and uh, uh, water supply, hydrodynamics, and hydropower. So as with the previous two workshops, we were asked to put together an invited panel that kick off each of these panels uh, or each of these workshops. And as there's a fair amount of overlap between the findings, uh, what I thought may be better, we'll just give you a summary in my next report that tries to pull together some of the, uh, the big outcomes of these workshops. The third item on the agenda is the uh, uh, letting you know that the... Okay, Peter, can I just stop you on yep. one thing? Uh, I think your report to the board is, is increasingly important since the uh, July announcement by the governor and Secretary Salazar on the Bay Delta Conservation Plan, because in their statement they specifically said that science would guide both water exports and ecosystem restoration. A much more explicit declaration that at least what we call the co-equal goals are the provenance of science. And, and so I would suspect that the importance of that workshop, panel, discussion, and everything else is even the greater because of that. Thank you. I think that's a very good observation. Um, and perhaps just as another comment on that is we've been very enthusiastic putting this together because it's given us an opportunity to access some of the really key people on these issues and seek their advice on the science plan at the same time. So it's, um, you've been a very good way to initiate a dialogue. <clears throat> 